Good morning. Welcome to our virtual worship service here at First Christian United Church of Christ in Burlington, North Carolina on the second Sunday of September. We're grateful that you join with us and trust you'll find the service to be inspiring and uplifting for you. Our service will begin with our organist Matt Rice playing the prelude Kumbaya. Come by here, Lord. May the Lord come by you and your house this day. Good morning. For our announcements this morning, a big thanks to Reverend Michelle Funk for bringing the sermon last week and for leading us in communion. Also, thanks to all who came to our Tuesday prayer and devotions outside the church. We'll meet again this Tuesday at 530. Please come out. We would love to see you. We are continuing with our Zoom virtual Sunday school each Sunday at 930 a.m., the Zoom link will be in the musings each week. If you want to learn about how to Zoom, contact Deborah. We're asking all of you to supply a picture and a short introduction for a resource to give any new pastor who may come. Check out this week's musings for more information. And the Board of Deacons sends a big thank you out to all of you who donated to the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life. For our joys and concerns this morning, it's a joy to announce that Matt Rice is one of three vice principals in the running for VP of the year in Rockingham County. We wish him the best. We're so grateful that Julie Miller is recovering well from her surgery. She will be seeing her doctors soon to set dates for the next steps. She sends her love and thanks for all the ongoing prayers and love that we're sending her way. We pray for the Littles. Miss Little has been recovering from the shingles. We pray for Ken as he takes care of her. And we also keep in mind Kevin May and his health concerns at this time. And June and Don Wilson have asked that we pray for their good friend, Bill Wilson, who has been diagnosed with cancer. And also, Carol Fonville asked that we pray for her brother, Joe, who will be having surgery in the next few days, so we hold him in the light. And as we do every week, we continue to pray for our community and our world as we seek to know the way forward with peace. Join me in our morning prayer. Dearest Lord, 
We pray for your love and compassion to abound as we walk through this challenging season. We ask for wisdom for those who bear the load of leading us in this oh-so-unique time. We pray for those that are suffering and all who are caring for them. We also ask for protection for all of us and ask that fear have no hold on our hearts or our minds. Give us the good sense to approach each day in faith and in peace, trusting in the truth of your goodness toward us. And we ask it all in your name. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, from the New International Version. It's the account of Jesus confronting Zacchaeus, or Zacchaeus confronting Jesus. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give one half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we shan't be ashamed. To turn, turn will be our delight, till by turning, turning, we come round right. This wonderful Shaker song was written in 1848 by Elder Joseph Brackett, who served as the very first Shaker minister in the state of Maine. It also became the basis of a Shaker dance, which I wish I could have seen. Now, I'm not sure what Elder Joseph had in mind when he first penned this wonderful song, but for me, it brings to life what it means to simply experience the joy of repentance and forgiveness and the grace of every day beginning afresh and anew. The word repentance is translated from the Greek word metanoia. And metanoia literally means a change of mind. 
Yet the full meaning of that Greek word is more nuanced. Metanoia implies a repentance that is not about blame or shame, but rather it is about making a decision to turn around to face a new direction. Novelist and theologian Frederick Buechner writes, to repent is to come to your senses. It is not so much something you do as something that happens. True repentance spend some time looking at the past and saying, I'm sorry, but more time looking at the future and saying, wow. <laughs> I love Beekner's definition. And while the story that we just heard of Zacchaeus is a bit dramatic, I think it also joyfully illustrates the principle and the grace of metanoia. So first, let me give you a little background to the Zacchaeus story. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and Jericho, being about 15 miles northeast of the city of Jerusalem, it becomes, Jericho becomes the perfect kind of oasis just to stop and rest a bit while he is on his way. Jericho was a low-lying city, and it was lush in vegetation, which meant that it became known as a city um, that was filled with date palms and fig trees and balsam groves. And that also meant that it became a, he a beehive of commercial activity. Now, with all that kind of commerce happening, the Roman governor would hire a trustworthy local to collect tax on the busy toll roads. And yes, the person collecting the tax most often was known to charge more than was actually required, and then they would pocket the difference. Pocketing a little extra was considered simply a perk of working for the Romans and for Caesar. Enter Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was not just any tax collector. He was a chief tax collector, which meant he had others working for him. Luke describes him, as we heard, as a wealthy man. Think of it this way. For Zacchaeus, every day was April 15. At any time, Zacchaeus and his cohorts could stop a person coming in or going out of Jericho, and they would assess duties on nearly everything in their possession. For instance, if I had a cart filled with dates and pigs, uh, not pigs, figs, sorry. If I had a cart filled with dates and figs, and I was going into the city of Jericho to sell my goods, then I could be stopped and taxed for every wheel on my cart. I could be taxed for the animal that pulled it. And of course, I would be taxed for the merchandise also on the cart. And then, always a little extra bit on top of it all for Zacchaeus, the tax man, and his crew, which made Zacchaeus possibly the most disliked man in town. Lou tells us that as Jesus was approaching the town of Jericho, there was a blind man um, begging on the side of the road, and Jesus stopped and healed him. And as you can imagine, news of the healing spread quickly, and so a whole crowd was gathering hoping to catch a glimpse of this new, wonderful rabbi whose touch meant healing. Zacchaeus must have heard the news, too, and wondered, who is this Jesus? And most importantly, will he be stopping through the, to the toll booths, right? What kind of money could he get out of this deal? 
So he decided he should check it out. But as we all know from that Sunday school song, Zacchaeus was a rather short man, and seeing over the crowd was a real chore. And that's something I personally can relate to. Now, Zacchaeus' only hope then was to kind of skirt ahead of the crowd and climb this tall sycamore tree. So there he was in the sycamore tree, kind of hiding but looking, and then the most amazing thing happened. Jesus stopped and looked up at him because Jesus had eyes to see, to see often what others missed. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today, right? We sang that. Well, Zacchaeus wasted no time scrambling down the tree, and according to Luke, he welcomed Jesus gladly. Now, I suppose Zacchaeus could have stayed up in that tree and rebuffed Jesus' invitation. After all, having such an unpredictable guest coming to your home could be a rather dangerous proposition. My spiritual director, Joyce Rupp, describes the risk in this way. Jesus, I know what happens when you visit someone's house. Conversations occur. Choices are presented. Changes happen. That's because, Jesus, you look for more than dust when you come to visit. You talk about things more vital than the weather. You move into the heart's dimension. You gaze deeply. You don't just dwell. You interact. Jesus, you activate. And that must have been what happened when Zacchaeus bravely allowed Jesus into his home and into his heart. Now, we don't know exactly what happened over supper or what the menu included, but Luke tells us about the results. Zacchaeus made a two-pronged pledge to give half of his yearly income to the poor and then to return any stolen funds four times over, which is way and above the legal requirement in Jewish law. Jewish law only required restitution and then 20% interest. But Zacchaeus pledged 400% interest because something in his encounter with Jesus radically and immediately changed the way he saw the world. It had to have been a glorious moment of metanoia, of turning around. In fact, Zacchaeus turned, 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 till by turning, he came round right. And while the Zacchaeus story is unique and rather dramatic, He turned around with repentance and forgiveness and transformation, and that can also be our story. Now, for some of us, metanoia can be full-on like Zacchaeus, but for most of us, it may feel more subtle, more incremental. Yet either way, all of us every day are called anew, into that joy of metanoia and that blessed gift of turning, turning straight into God's arms of love and amazing grace. Every day, a new beginning. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, please grant that we may each have a Zacchaeus heart so that we may unreservedly invite you to come 
and stay at our house today. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. My friends, this week, may you experience the amazing grace of God's love, care, and comfort. May you turn and turn every morning and feel the sense of God's love, God's grace, God's blessings. Amen. <laughs>